In this week's episode of Working with Todoist, we're going to take a look at settings. Hello and welcome to another episode of Working with Todoist. My name is Carl Pauline and in this week's episode I thought it was time that we took a look at Todoist's settings. Now the reason for this is that over the last few months there's been quite a few changes, what is usually described as under the hood changes going on in Todoist. And I really would like to take you through what you can do with settings in Todoist because there seems to be a lot of confusion and I get a lot of questions about can I do this and how do you do that and so on and so forth. And most of the answers to those questions are actually in the settings menu. So we're going to have a look at that but before we do that I would just like to ask if you like this video please click on that like button below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet please subscribe. Okay, let's get straight into Todoist and let's have a look at the settings. Okay, the first one I want to show you is actually from the app window itself. So this is actually the Todoist app. It's not the web version which I'm going to do the settings from for most of this episode. But this is just a quick trick that I learned a long time ago because my eyesight is not very good. <clears throat> And also, for those of you who are using a big screen, now I was using and do use a 27-inch monitor. I used to use one a 27-inch iMac, and now I'm using a 27-inch uh, external monitor. But what you can do is you can change the size of the text in the window. So I should point out again, this is the app version. On a web version, it's going to be a little bit different. All you have to do, and this is on a Mac, uh, you can find the appropriate way on the Windows, is just hit the Command Plus, and when you hit the Command Plus, you can actually increase the size of the text window in Todoist. Now, you're going to have to do this every time you open Todoist. It doesn't actually save your preference here, and there is no way of doing it uh, within the preferences itself but it's only command and then for me it's usually two taps on the plus and I get a bigger text version and because my eyesight is not very good that's a really useful tip. Anyway that isn't in settings that's you do from any window within Todoist. Now let's move into the settings itself and we're going into my demo account here. So in my demo account, uh, you're going to have all your, we're going to start off at the top, so you get all your account details here. I'm using Todoist Premium in my demo, demo account because I believe very strongly in what Todoist are doing, so I'm more than happy to pay for it. And you can add your photo, and if you click on your photo, you can edit, you can remove, you can do whatever you want. Uh, of course, it's got your name, you can change your name, you can change your email address, and of course, you can change your password here. And also you can connect your social accounts to log into Todoist if you wish. I don't like that, just a personal preference. I don't particularly like the idea that Facebook may or may not know my login details. And of course down here we have a new feature, which I'll just zoom in here for you. We have a new feature that Todoist opened up very recently, which is if you can earn yourself two free months of Todoist Premium every time a friend you refer upgrades to Premium. So all you need to do is get your personalized link and you just click on that and you will get your personalized link. Send that to your friend and if they upgrade to Todoist Premium, you will get two free months yourself. And of course, if you delete your Todoist account, all your data will be wiped out, including all your history. So you won't be able to get it back. So that's in the front page of your settings window. Then we move into the general section. The general section is, uh, you can choose your language of course, and your start page custom. Now for those of you who are curious, I use inbox today overdue. I don't, I don't think I've, just a second, I think I may have, and I don't have my um, waiting for, because I don't have a waiting for label in my demo account. Now what this does is, whenever you open Todoist, you click on the it'll always open up in this view. So P inbox and today and overdue. 
if you're in a project window, let's say I go into my personal here and I want to get back to my what I call my dashboard view, you can hit that and it will take you straight back. Hit the Lewis to do its logo in the top left and you will get straight back to your dashboard view. So that's what you can do with that one. And also you can uh, go in here and you can do smart date recognition. Yes, I want to do is to automatically uh, you can turn this on or off if you wish, by the way. Um, so recognize due dates or you can turn it on or off. So those of you who don't like to do is every time you write, send this report to Jim on Monday <laughs> and it sets the date for Monday. So you end up with text. It says send this report to Jim on. <laughs> yeah, it, it can be a bit confusing. So that one you can turn off again. You can turn off your auto accept invites as well. You can set your time zone, time format the start day of the week and when next week. Now next week means you can choose any day you like. Next week will refer to how inter Todoist interprets your next week when you're postponing tasks. So if you're postponing a task, you actually get the option. So let's just have a look at this. I'll, I'll use this one here. Uh, if you go down here, you've got a few things here. You've got the uh, smart scheduling, you've got today, you've got tomorrow, and this one here is next week. So if you've set that for Tuesday or Wednesday, it will automatically, when you hit that button, set it for Tuesday or Wednesday next week. So that's something that you want to keep in mind when you're doing that particular thing. And as you're going down, you can set date times and all sorts of, and yes, send me an email agenda. Yes, notify me about updates and so on and so forth. Now, this one is very interesting. And let me just quickly show you what the email looks like. So this is the email that you get from Todoist every morning. Now, this is a fantastic feature for those of you who are not allowed to have Todoist on your work computer. What you can do is arrange for Todoist. You can just turn that on. Todoist will then email you your tasks that you've got to do uh, this day. So this, one's, this one is overdue because this is my demo account, by the way. I very rarely have. You get your details at the bottom here, but it gives you everything that you need. So I've got here, start project 2008 winter holiday that's come up and I can view all that in Todoist by just clicking on there if I wish. But for you, those of you who are not allowed to deal with have to do this on your work computer, then this is a way forward because you can just hit print and print it out for the day and you've got your task list with you really good one or you could just forward this to your work email account and print it out from work very clever way of doing it really one really really useful for those of you as i say who are who are not allowed to have to do it on your computer at work so that's how that works and of course if you want to get access to the beta version and really you have to be very trusting to do that you can turn that on here and it will give you the beta version and i do believe that to do are bringing out some new features later on this year i hope your subscription details are all in the next section, so you can do your subscription details. I'm due to repay, I'm due to pay my latest one on the 15th of November, which I will be doing with a greatest of pleasure in about two weeks time. Of course, then you can go into your theme and your theme with the dark mode, if you like, which I'm using in my main account at the moment. And to do is, you've got neutral, tangerine, you can choose all your colors. Incidentally, the ones with stars, those are the ones that are available only for the premium users of Todoist. And those are the ones with stars. So if you're not on the premium version of Todoist, then you will not be able to get access to these colors. But if you are, then you get access to all of those colors. Your karma points come up next. Oh, I should go back into theme here. One point about the theme, and I have pointed this out before, is you can sync it or you can turn the sync off. So if you want a different setup on your, com uh, on your computer than you do on your mobile phone, then this turn this off and then you have freedom to have it set up however you want it on any of your devices. So maybe you want the tangerine color on your mobile device and you want the dark theme on your desktop device and maybe you want the red to do this color on your desktop. Whatever way you want to do it, if you turn off sync, you can have it however you want it set up. Going into the karma points, of course, now this is where you can or cannot use this. I mean, this is really up to you. If you want to gamify your productivity, which is good fun, you can set this up you can set up with a daily goal. Very, very simple to change that. You just hit edit and you can change that to as many you know daily goals as you want. Keep it realistic. 
this is unrealistic because I'm obviously likely to do the um, the uh, more than five tasks a day, and I'm certainly going to. Hey, up oh, we've got my um, <laughs> we, we've got my my trackpad is talking to my computer there. So uh, that's the one, and you can have days off as well. So if this does not affect your day days off. This will not affect your. Uh, karma points when you've got the days off so on this one I've got Saturday and Sunday actually on my regular account I just have Saturday and of course you can turn on or off your vacation mode right here so if you go on vacation you don't want to be trying to hit your daily karma targets then just turn on vacation mode and it won't affect you in here the next one we got the reminders now you can default timing only on tasks with the due time these reminders will be set automatically so you can set that uh, you can get a warning 30 minutes before, 10 minutes before, one hour before, you set that up however you want to do it. You can test your push notifications. I believe Todoist had done some changes to this recently. So if you had problems with your uh, push notifications and the notifications that Todoist sends you in the past, I would suggest that you have a check on that and see what happens. So particularly in this area with your mobile push notification, have a look at that, see what's going. But remember, if you've got your notifications for Todoist turned off on your main mobile device, then obviously they're not going to come through. And of course, you can send set up your text messaging settings here. You can send text messages to your phone if you wish as a reminder. Coming up on here now, we've got notifications. So you can decide whether you want to have your notifications. I, I actually have them turned on on my main account because I do occasionally collaborate with people. So that's all in there. And then we've got backups, which come in here. So you can actually, these ones, if you've lost your Todoist account or something's gone wrong, you can restore from your backup. You would download that. My last backup was done on the 28th of October, which is actually a over a week ago but I'm sure there'll be another one coming in soon because I've opened up this account today download it you'll get a, a UTC file and then you can double click on that and it will restore your database finally we have the integrations and within your integrations this is where you can set up whatever you want within Todoist so you, I've got Google Calendar so I've used that for uh, setting up to show people how to use Google Calendar you've got Mail Butler which is my email plugin on my Apple email and of course if you want to get the Outlook and the calendar Apple feed to have these set up just be careful though because sometimes you'll end up duplicating tasks in your calendar and and it just can get very messy the beauty of this is when you connect this you can actually connect it to a specific project now I have my Google Calendar uh, set up for only my only my tickler file because that is date specific all my other tasks are not date specific so be careful with that one because it can go crazy and it can make your calendar a complete mess and that's essentially what we have now in settings it's actually quite a useful tool a lot of people never go in there looking and seeing what they can do by the way just on the gear icon you can just change your theme directly from here and you've got all sorts of other things you can find out about this keyboard shortcuts here so well worth using if you want to use those and so that's essentially what you can do i think i've talked long enough now i've given you pretty much everything you need to know there about the settings if there is anything that you are not sure about or you want to be able to change something feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below and i'll be more than happy to cut to answer your question but apart from that it just remains for me now to wish you all a very very productive week Thank you for watching this video. If you liked what you saw and you would like to learn more about becoming better organized and more productive, then get yourself enrolled in my free beginner's guide to creating your own COD system. And if you'd like to learn more about how I can help you, then visit my website at carlpauline.com. All the details are in the show notes below.